for today's topic, we're going to be talking about amending, changing, or editing our Constitution. That is what we do as we go along. Uh, it is a direct result of the work that the drafters put into the Constitution that after the original Ten Amendments, known as the Bill of Rights, that were adopted in 1791, the original document has been changed only 17 more times. Most of those amendments have been to protect or to expand rights that are already in the Constitution or uh, in the Bill of Rights. So most of those things have been actually to uh, increase rights, eh, really without the exception, with the exception of prohibition and only a few things that were actually uh, structural in design. So we're going to go through a few of them here in a little bit. Over the years, though, there have been a lot of proposals to alter the Constitution. In 1808, there was a proposal by a Connecticut senator uh, that the nation choose its president through an annual random drawing of a list of retiring senators, which sometimes doesn't seem like that bad of an idea. Uh, you'd get a lot more senators retiring more frequently, though. You also get a 1923 proposal. Uh, it was an amendment to guarantee equal rights for women. If the Constitution has rarely been amended, part of it could be because it was designed to be difficult, but not impossible, to do so. Amendments must follow one of two different routes. Under um, <clears throat> the one followed by all amendments to date, two-thirds majorities of each House of Congress vote for their approval, and three-quarters of the state legis legislatures add the ratification. Under the second route, two-thirds of the states may vote to call a constitutional convention whose proposed amendments must be ratified by three-fourths of the state legislatures. The first ten amendments were added in 1791, and later amendments introduced such far-reaching changes as ending slavery, creating national guarantees of due process and individual rights, granting, the women, granting women the right to vote, and providing for direct uh, popular election of U.S. senators. So in 1793, the Supreme Court angered the states by accepting jurisdiction in a case where the individual sued the state of Georgia. Now, to ensure that that didn't happen again, Congress, uh, the, and the states, of course, ratified it, added the 11th Amendment to the Constitution in 1798. It took them five years to do that. The 12th Amendment, ratified in 1804, had electors vote separately for president and vice president. Until that point, uh, the candidate with the most electoral college votes became president, and the runner-up became vice president. Now, that could actually wind up um, being an issue, as you'll actually see here in a couple of weeks when we go over the fact that it does become an issue where the president and vice president are a completely opposing parties. The 13th Amendment, ratified in 1865, abolished slavery. The 14th Amendment was adopted in 1868, uh, was to protect the civil rights of former slaves. It granted citizenship to all people born in the United States. And then two years after that, the 15th Amendment declared that the right to vote shall not be abridged on account of race or previous conditions of servitude. The 16th Amendment authorized an income tax, this is in 1913, when the Supreme Court had declared that it was unconstitutional in 1895. The 17th Amendment required the direct election of senators. The 18th Amendment prohibited the manufacture and sale of alcoholic beverages. The 19th Amendment extended the vote to women. The 20th Amendment reduced the time between the election official, uh, the election and the actual inauguration, the time that they uh, assume their office. It used to be in March, and then they kicked it back to January. And then in 1933, Congress proposed an amendment to repeal prohibition, the 21st Amendment. It was ratified in just 286 days. They did not take long uh, to go back on that one. The 22nd Amendment, adopted in 1951, limited presidents to two terms. Before, it was just one of those things that presidents did, and then they said, okay, well, we actually need something to uh, really limit the president to two terms. The 23rd Amendment, enacted in 1961, allowed residents of the District of Columbia to vote in presidential elections. The 24th Amendment, ratified in 1964, prohibited a poll tax in federal elections. And the 25th Amendment, 1967, 
provided a system for selecting a new vice president after the death or resignation of a president, and it also established a system to deal with the possibility that a president might become disabled. Here is uh, Lyndon Johnson being sworn in after the assassination of Kennedy. The 26th Amendment, adopted in 1971, extended the right to vote to 18-year-olds. The 27th Amendment uh, was ratified in 1992. It prevents Congress from giving itself an immediate pay increase. It says that a change in pay can only go into effect after the next congressional election. So if you really are upset about Congress voting in a pay raise for themselves, then you can go ahead and just vote them out. That's the idea behind that one. And at the end of the Constitutional Convention, George Washington said, I do not expect the Constitution to last for more than 20 years. Now, you got to wonder what he was thinking about that. Was the country not going to last for 20 years, or we were going to do what? Probably replace it. Uh, people keep talking about the Founding Fathers going, uh, showing up in this time and saying, what have you done to the Constitution? And a lot of historians think they'd probably say something along the lines of, why do you still have that thing? Because they didn't expect that that would last that long. Today, the Constitution, however, is the oldest written constitution in the world. Note the written part of that, because there are older constitutions, but they're not written down. Uh, so why has it survived? Now, the framers of the Constitution established a broad structure of government, but also left the system uh, flexible enough to adapt to changing conditions. It's less than 8,000 words long. And it's not really overly detailed. Over the years, Congresses and Presidents and the courts have reinterpreted the Constitution to meet the needs that they had at that moment. So that's it that we have for today. I hope you all are doing well. And I will talk to you later.